What's going on guys, King Trats here, back another video on the channel, and today, we went a little West Indian, West Indian vibes, you know the vibes, you don't know, uh, I actually am part West Indian, my mother, my mother's side, uh, my grandfather is Jamaican, so that makes me part Jamaican, and I partake in a lot of Jamaican cuisine, so I did a little bit of a spin, of course this is the OG, this is the jerk chicken, we got a little jerk chicken going on right here, just take a look at that, nice bark on it, nice bit of seasoning jerk seasoning jerk marination if you don't know how to make the jerk chicken it's very simple oh, i got a little burnt end on there that's okay i like burnt end. i don't know why i took that off if you don't know i will put a video down in the description i have made this jerk chicken a lot of times the rice is completely different though we did today we did a curry pineapple infused jasmine rice yes that is right the yellow that you see here is actually curry it is not the normal yellow rice that i make i did a little bit of different variation on the health rice and of course you know I love my roasted broccoli, garlic, sea salt, a little pepper. You know what I'm saying, please. Can you feel it? I love that bark. You see that nice bark on there? Oh, I wish you had to smell the vision between a jerk spice and a curry spice and that garlic on that broccoli. I can't wait to dig into this. If you notice, camera looks a little bit different today, a little different resolution. That's because I'm finally filming on my new camera. Let's see how this goes today. Let's see how well this video does as far as the video quality, but I'm excited and I'm ready to dig into this. So I'm gonna break off a piece because I don't even need to, oh, that's hot. I'm about to burn my damn hand. You know what? Let's just do it this way. Let's just do it this way. Yeah, let's take a little piece. Let's take a little piece, right? Boom. This is why I don't like eating rice with a fork and I say it all the time. I genuinely cannot stand eating rice with a fork, but in all its splendor. Come in here for the real thing. Do you feel it? Whew. I don't know how y'all grew up, but when you smelled the cooking going on in my house growing up, sometimes we went West Indian, and my mom would start cooking. It wasn't a Sunday with stuff like this. And when I tell you that I spent the whole day drooling incessantly because I couldn't wait to eat, and you could just smell it, and then right when the street lights turned off and it was time to go home, you were just digging that first bite. You'd be like, mm. and life was just good. And that's how I feel right now. You know what I mean? Just look. Just come in here for the real thing. Mm. And I've made this a lot, but I've never made it on this camera. So you can really, really see the detail now. That nice bark, that nice juicy chicken, the inside. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And boy, they taste good. Nice and spicy. You can't tell by looking at it. But this is actually very spicy. A lot of people that don't like spicy food, I don't know if you're able to handle this. I made jerk chicken one time, put it on parm. Well, no, I make jerk chicken Alfredo is what I did. Mm. So it just falls apart, which was a complete freestyle. But it came out so good. But it was so spicy because I put that same spice in the Alfredo. And if you watch that video, I'm tearing the whole time. This, you can cool it down. Nice pineapple. A little sweet, a little heat. A little bit of the salty. And it's just, it's just, it's the spot. I don't know how much I even want to talk. I hate eating rice with a fork. You have no idea. Like, I have to use a spoon. See, I don't know how people eat rice with a fork. I don't. But when it comes to me, I need that spoon. You see all the goodness you got, and it's just right up there in your mouth. I know somebody will say something about that. I know what y'all going to say before I even, like, as soon as words exit my mouth sometimes, I'm like, oh, I can't believe I just said that. And I feel horrible because I know I'm going to get slayed. But, yeah. I spent all day trying to figure this camera out. I hope it turns out okay. I hope the sound's okay. There's a mic with the camera. It's on the top. It's a pretty expensive camera. But I've been making like little testing videos all day. And boy, I don't even care. Because this is delicious. Super delicious. And shout out to all of you 
who helped make this possible. Real talk. Because when you watch the video, I know everybody hates the ads. I watch YouTube. I hate ads. I completely understand. But when you let that ad ride, when you just don't X out of the video, that's how YouTubers, for the most part, other than sponsorships, make their money. I'm being 100% honest. I'm not in this to get rich, but I want to make better videos for you guys. And the way for me to do that is to run those ads. So the camera, thank you. Because I got parody out this, this is my trash camera. I did. I knew it was trash. But we moved. And we're here. I don't know how we got here. But thank you. And also, shout out to the people that chopped it up in the comments. A lot of people love my mischief story when I was a child about me getting suspended for throwing a cheese pretzel. <laughs> it was a cheese pretzel. I don't think I said that yesterday. I remember the kid's name, too. I can see his face. I never disliked him. Just that day. I had a short temper, and he just, just shut up. And he kept going, and he kept going. I said, you're going to get something thrown at your head. And he said, do it. Where I come from, that was a dare. So, he took the cheese pretzel to the face. You don't know what cheese pretzels are. It was a staple in my, home, my high school, my middle school. Think the big soft pretzels you get from like baseball games, like fairs, things like that. They're huge, soft, but the inside wasn't dough. It was just cheese. The cheese would just ooze out, and it was like a dollar. And they were so good. There were a few things that were staples growing up. And the cheese pretzel in my school was an institution. I still can't find them. I've looked everywhere. I know the brand. I know what it looks like. I can't find it. And if anybody can find the giant stuffed cheese pretzel, I would do an entire mukbang eating nothing but those cheese pretzels in a bag of Doritos. Had to have Doritos. Matter of fact, I do the old high school school lunch. Y'all don't know nothing about this. This might be the weirdest thing you'll ever hear, but there's a hundred percent facts. The cool thing to do at my school. I'm eating this chicken with my hands. Look at the bark. Just look at that. And that is right there. That's the flavor. That's the... Because I use thighs, still super juicy on the inside, but it's got that bark like barbecue chicken. So when you make barbecue, you usually have the skin on, on a wing. A lot of people do the drumsticks. I don't really like drumsticks. And that gets a little char on it. That's the flavor for me. But... Back to the original story of him. I'm sorry for talking my mouth full. I got a whole bunch of food right here. Because I can't shut up. I'm about to shove more in my mouth. I'm, I'm working with y'all. I'm trying. I'm going to wait. Take a drink for the story. By the way. Drink your choice. Again. Sugar free. Gatorade Zero. I found like five boxes. I said this in another one. And I absolutely love it. I've been drinking Gatorade Zero for a while. And when I got sick, actually, with the uh, the 19, you know the 19? I had to drink a lot of Gatorade. But I don't like drinking my calories. So I drank Zero. And I became kind of addicted to it. I started drinking them all throughout the summer. Even afterwards. But. Original story. What we used to do. My high school, my middle school, a lot of people don't think it's weird. We would get a hard roll, like the Kaiser roll, the big joints. I don't know what you guys do, but like, you get them from like, you get like a bacon, egg, and cheese in Jersey, they come on a hard roll. We call it a hard roll. Um, they're not really hard, but that's what we call them. And next step with the buttered hard rolls, you got a buttered roll. You get a butter roll at a diner. I'm sure you guys will have butter rolls before if you haven't. I'm just explaining to people who might not have had it. I know there's people watching from all over the world. Maybe you haven't. So I'm trying to be a little in detail and not just assume. With broccoli, people think I hate vegetables and I just, whatever. I'm getting off topic. Get yourself a bag of chips, preferably Doritos, Cool Ranch, or nacho cheese. 
Or back then we had 3D Doritos, which don't exist in the U.S., but they exist in Mexico. But that was also the dopeness. Put Doritos on a butter roll, smash it. That's lunch. Then you get you a chocolate milk, the school-issued version, don't crazy, and a cup with ice in it. Put chocolate milk in a cup. Then you take your last 50 cents, because at that point, you spent a dollar fifty or two fifty, depending on how many rolls you got. You can get yourself a package of Linden's, specifically Linden's, butter crunch cookies. When I tell you, I want that now. I can get butter crunch cookies. I can get a butter roll and Doritos. But if I get that cheese pretzel, we do in a school lunch mukbang. Now, I'm gonna be the happiest person you'll ever see. Butter roll and Doritos, I'm telling you. Some people like the light. I used to go with the thick coating of butter. I was a heavy kid. Whatever. But that was the thing. I don't know what you guys did for school lunch. We didn't have like crazy food. But did you like school lunch? Because I loved it. I was a school lunch kid. Even that little crusty pizza that we got on Fridays. Like people like, oh yeah, you put ranch on your pizza. That was the play at my school. You put ranch, and you dunk it. You had the whole community ranch, and then you pour a little bit on your your, your you know styrofoam, your tray. Yo, this is so. I mean, you can tell I'm smashing this. It's so good. Mm. But community ranch, pour a little on your plate, and you take that dry pizza. It was supposed. To, it, they was kind of like Ilio's pizzas. They were like the square joints. But you didn't care. I used to like the hot turkey sandwich with mashed potatoes and gravy. That was another one. The chicken patties. Super flat. That was another one. And at my school, we had a lot of Polish kids in our school. So the lunch ladies were Polish. And they used to make this soup. It was Polish soup. It was called Bigos, I think. Bro, you get you a big tub of that with some bread. be dunking the bread in it. You'd be surprised. I don't know if you guys ever had Polish food. Like, it's so good. It's very similar to German food, because I'm part German, where it's a lot of, like, just meat, potatoes, or, like, you know, the pierogies, obviously. I grew up across the street from a Polish deli. I'm eating this so fast. I, I, I'm, I think I'm, like, 10, 15 minutes in, right? And I'm, like, halfway, more than halfway done. I'm sorry. This right here just hit different. Just rice. Like I said, this is white jasmine rice, but I infused it with curry and garlic. Excuse me. And you can see the finished product. It's just like this. And this is Jamaican curry. There is a difference between West Indian curry and what people think Indian curry. I was going to make some curry chicken, but the last minute I decided to do some jerk chicken. I don't know if y'all know about the West Indian vibe, but here it finds you a nice spot. And get you some jerk chicken, which is probably the most popular thing from like people who just eat it. And don't get like, you know how people you know like the, the wing places and they say this is like jerk spice. It's not the same. Okay, if the jerk spice is not like a paste, that's not it. I've seen jerk spices work like, when you go like to like wing places where it's like this like red like sauce. Like that's not jerk. It don't even taste the same. Don't buy that jerk from like the store, like. You gotta get to, to the West Indian section to get the correct jerk. You know. There's a huge difference. But, try that. Oxtails, which are exactly what they sound like if you don't know. It is the tail of an ox. And you slice it, and they come like this. You put it, you cook it in like a slow cooker or a pressure cooker. I can make oxtails, I just never go to the store to get them. You got to go to certain markets to find it. Maybe I'll do that too one day. I don't know. Drop something in the comments if you want to see like oxtails or something a little more West Indian. A little rice and peas. Aki and saltfish. I'll get like 10 beef patties, line them up, some cocoa bread. Yeah, I got to get cocoa bread. You don't get cocoa bread. I'm going way over you guys' heads. Matter of fact, I want to know if you have an ethnicity... What your ethnicity is. What's your weapon of choice? What'd you grow up eating? What kind of food? Let's do some ethnic stuff. I like ethnic stuff. And I can make a lot of ethnic stuff. And if not, 
I actually live near a Polish deli, and I can go pick up some Polish food for sure. But that's the kind of food that I really love. Of course, I love my McDonald's and Popeyes and, and Burger King. But the ethnic stuff, like African food, Polish food, Italian, obviously Italian is very popular. Spanish, South American, Mexican food, like real deal Mexican food. Well, let's get a roll call, man. What, what are we saying here? The one thing I will say is this. If I do Indian food of any sort, it's going to have to be a small amount. Because again, you know how you guys think I take turbo shits? Indian food will do that. It, it, it's like, like Drano for me. It just goes right through me. I might be TMI, but I got to tell you. The main reason why you've never seen me eat it, I've had it before. But it don't agree with my stomach. You know, and it's, it comes back to that same thing I always say. A lot of Indian food is spicy, which I can tolerate. But very spicy, large meals, out of commission. I get all the meals for sorry for your toilet. I feel you, but that's not the play. You can see this This one down smooth. This is like, like mom made. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Hmm. I almost don't want to finish it. Hmm. There I go again. I'm making the sound. I told you. When something tastes good, I just do. I don't know why I do it. And I, I try so hard not to do it. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention this. You see the painting back there? My Joker painting? I'm obsessed with the Joker. I've always been obsessed with the Joker. It isn't a new thing. You see I have his smile and a tattoo right here. Um, I know that, you know, the, the late, great Heath Ledger, I love his performance. Um, there have been a lot of other great Joker performances. Mark Hamill, um, excuse me, again, who played the Joker voice acting was amazing. Um, Jack Nicholson was phenomenal Joker. Even Cesar Romero from way back, if you watched it, da -da -da -da, old school Batman, like, there have been some very, very good Jokers. Um, obviously, Joaquin Phoenix was, was very good in that movie. Though I didn't really love the movie, I thought he was phenomenal. The story left something, I know it's an origin story, but, like, the, the, it just, it, the story just didn't, I don't know. I, I, I loved his performance, though. Now, a lot of times I like performances in movies, but I've always been obsessed with the Joker. And this is actually a puzzle. And it has every Joker. You can't really see Heath Ledger's Joker, Mark Hamill's Joker. Obviously, this is Mark Hamill's Joker. But Nicholson is hiding in there somewhere. Where the hell do you go? Some of the comic book Jokers. Um, some of the cartoon Jokers. So there's all the different ones. And my reason that I'm so obsessed quote unquote with the Joker was well there are numerous reasons. Obviously you know the tattoo holds significance for me and just for my anxiety thing. And there's a specific scene in the Dark Knight where Batman throws a Joker off the building. Literally. And he's falling to his death. And he starts laughing. And I know this sounds crazy, but that resonated with me because at that point, you know, Dark Knight came out right when my anxiety issues started to hit. So when he fell off the building and he's laughing, I'm like, I understand he's a psychopath. And that's not the part that I enjoyed. It was that that he was about to like fall, you know, and be gone. And his reaction to it was to laugh hysterically. And that became one of the biggest ways that I started dealing with the anxiety. The anxiety for me started, it came from like worry. And not necessarily about a specific thing. I was a control freak. And when things were out of my control, I would start to get anxious if I couldn't control what was happening. So it came kind of from there. And it started mainly after I stopped playing football. Because that was sort of my, like, release. I mean, running around and getting to hit people is a good way to release. And I felt like after that I didn't have a purpose. And this is completely, like, keeping it in the buck with you guys. You know, I've never won a cap. And I never thought of going to the NFL or anything like that. But my identity for so long 
was to be a football player. That's what I did. Yeah, I went to school, but from the point when I was five or six years old, I put on shoulder pads. I didn't take them off until I was a senior in college. So I was 20. 15 years was my identity. It's like a boxer after his final fight. You feel like you have to find your second calling. And I struggled with that. I was just a normal student, which isn't a bad thing, but for me, it was like, well, what now? Am I going to go, like, be a teacher? I don't know. And I just, I, it, I, it, that's not what caused it. It just happened out of nowhere. But I think that was a huge trigger. But seeing that scene in that movie, kind of, you know, when I go through tragic or crazy stuff, and I get in trouble for it sometimes, I start laughing. That's where this came from. Sometimes, a lot of times I get anxious sometimes when I'm driving, because that's when I do a lot of thinking. And thinking causes it. So when I'm driving, I drive my left hand. And that's why I put it here. Because I can see my left hand, and it kind of reminds me. I start laughing. It's a good way for me to deal with it. I'm not telling you to be me, but that's where the ha-has, you know, come from. People think, oh, you just want to be the Joker. Like, no. There's a reasoning behind it. And it's a good way that I deal with things. And I think I said this before, but... You know, some of the bad things that happened to me in life, like, 2014, so what, six years ago at this point, like, I lost my house in a fire. People had to think I was crazy. Outside, there's a crowd. I mean, the whole block of people staring at my house. Firemen are busting the windows out. You know, you, you see them going in, there's smoke everywhere, there's fire. And I'm standing outside in underwear. And the dog, my dog, my three-month-old, who's now... Six, Bane, on a leash, Pitbull, and I'm laughing hysterically. I swear to you. And people had to think I was crazy. But for me, it was my way of just being like, <laughs> what the hell are you going to do? Like, at that point, I can't put the fire out. Only they can. I can't do anything. So... I laughed. <laughs> so I laughed. I don't know. And, you know, my next order of business was to figure out, okay, well, we move. What, what's the next play? Find a place to stay. Okay, we move. What's the next play? I got to find clothes because I didn't have any. Literally, underwear. <laughs> they gave me, like, the Red Cross gave me, like, they handed me a, a card with, like, 50 bucks on it. So, thank you to the Red Cross. When you donate, I guess that's where it goes. So, it does help. Ever since then, I've been donating to the Red Cross. Um, but... I bought clothes. I went up in the hotel. You know, started talking to the insurance companies and figure out what the hell to do. And what I always tell myself in bad times, and you can use this too, is one day you'll laugh about this. And it always helps me. Because bad times, as bad as they get, they don't last. And a lot of jokers had the smile on them all the time and they were always smiling no matter what. And that's kind of where it kind of triggers people that I'm always happy, but it's genuine. Like, I just feel like there are so many blessings in life to just kind of just be happy about, even though it sucks sometimes. Like, I just laugh and I smile and we move. That's just how I live my life. And he was the catalyst for it. A comic book villain. No figure. No cap, no BS. This was before The Dark Knight. And when The Dark Knight happened, obviously with Heath Ledger's performance, which was, for me, unbelievable, it just made me even more of a Joker person. There's a, I, have, I have about five Joker paintings in my house. And I like villains more in movies because I feel like it's more of a point of view. And yes, they're bad people, but they... Usually, like, I have a Darth Vader painting, and Darth Vader, I'm such a nerd, bro, I know, people are probably so turned off by this, but whatever. Darth Vader turned bad because he was in love. And he tried to stop because he kept having visions that his wife, who he loved, was going to die. And it made him nuts. It made him do evil things. It just goes to show you how, like, 
fragile things are. So I looked at him more like a tragic, because that wasn't who he was. If you're a Star Wars person, you know by the end of Darth Vader's character arc, I'm such a nerd. He turns out to be good again. He, when he finally perishes, perishes, he's good. He's no longer Darth Vader. He's Anakin Skywalker again. But his heartbreak caused him to turn that bad to that breathing machine that people know. So, it's all about how you, you, you look at these villains. And obviously, I'm talking fictional villains. Like, But I, I've always been the guy who root for the bad guys in movies. I don't know. Because I feel like maybe they're misunderstood. But that's my Joker story. That's why the painting's there. That's why the tattoo's there. And a lot of times when I have things, I'll kind of just put my hand like this. And I'll be in the mirror. And I just smile. <laughs> so that's why I put it there. You get it? So it's not just like this cool, I want to be cool thing. It's actually a coping mechanism mechanism for my anxiety. That was so... Seriously, you want to make the jerk chicken, look at the recipe. It'll be down in the description or I'll put a tag up on the top. But it's really, really, really good. Super easy to make. A lot of you have made it. You've tagged me in it on Instagram. And, and it's tasty as hell. Um, I'll figure out next time I do a video, I'll make this rice. I was kind of like farting around when I did it, so I didn't write anything down. And since I had a new camera, it was already like here and I couldn't mess with it. So I, I will do something next time with more cooking. I don't want to put something out unless I actually know it's good, you know, or, or what to do or how to do it. So now I have an idea of a recipe. But um, over the weekend, I've got some reviews coming. Um, I've got a place that I'm actually traveling to since I have my new camera. Um, so I'm going to do a bit more of an outdoor, uh, kind of thing. And I've got a review coming on some new stuff. So we've got some more content. Like I said, every day, thank you guys for rocking with me. Um, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep trying to put together good content. Thank you for enjoying the content. I've said content like 40 times, but anyway, as I always say at the end of my videos, and it's not a joke, I have to get back to work. <sighs> we move early in the morning. I got two jobs now. I got this and I have my actual day job, which you know, it's back in full swing and it's going great. So we move. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. It is your boy, King Shratz. We'll be back tomorrow. More content. I love you. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.